Hello, everybody. It's your boy, Ramblin' Dave Neal. How's it going? Good to see you today. Happy hump day. Speaking of humping, here's a story I've been meaning to get into here. Blake Horstman and Becca Kufrin, a former finalists or semifinalist, I guess you should say, on Becca's season of The Bachelorette. There's been rumors uh, lingering for the last uh, five or six months or, or so, wondering if they're going to get back together. Now, look. Will they get back together? Will they not? Who am I to say? But as someone who's completely invested into the lives of several strangers, I want to uh, plead my case as to why I think they should get back together and share some info regarding as such. As we all know, Becca um, uh, broke off her engagement, or Garrett did, whichever the case was, um, in the late summer, uh, strangely enough, at the exact two-year anniversary of the airing of their engagement, which means they don't have to give back the ring. Cha-ching! Not saying that. That's why, but, uh, you know, your boy, uh, I see what's up over there. So they broke up, and then everyone's saying, well, what about Blake? Blake loved you. Everyone loved Blake. Blake was a fan favorite. Uh, Becca, you know, got to meet the parents, this and that. Why not get into it? And then, you know, uh, uh, Becca moves to Los Angeles, and then uh, what do we have here but Blake showing up to Cha-Cha Chicken, which I have to tell you, if you ever go to Santa Monica, don't go to Cha-Cha Chicken. It's not good food. It's not good service. It, there's nothing. Okay, I'll send you places to go, but stay away from Cha Cha Chicken. Although I will say you can take a good photo. He's looking great in this photo. But what do we have here? What do my, what do my eyes see? Uh, uh, Becca Kufrin, a.k.a. B. Kuf, uh, with a uh, post that says, Stop ordering so many tapas. Now, I don't know about you guys, but... Um, Instagram commenting on your ex's photos only happens when there is potential for canoodling in the future. I mean, prove me wrong. Now, if she was uh, married or whatever and they remain friends, so be it. But you're on a public forum here, so let's just click right into it. Um, <clears throat> people start, let's say, got to get to the initial replies here. Hold on, we got a lot going on here. So she says, stop watering so many tapas with a nice little, uh, what is that, an upside down smiley face? I don't even know what that means. And then, and then Blake goes, but tapas are your favorite. All right, so we're flirting over tapas. I'll get into some tapas. Let me join. And then uh, some random person goes, keep going. And then people are like, I'm so here for this. You know, all of us losers, me included, are just going after it. Listen, Blake, don't be liking my comments insinuating naughty things between you and Becca. You will give all of us some hope for y'all. Uh, dying, why didn't you uh, go horseback riding with Becca? People thought they were going to go horse riding together. You know, Becca's into the horse, whatever. A lot of people here, a bunch of Sherlock Holmes trying to figure it all out, only with the side of Margs. Uh, so so uh, Becca's saying, we need to get some drinks and do things. There's a lot of subtext to be reading into all of this. Uh, it's Jesse Yount says, so, so here for this so hard. Well, I think we all are. I think we're all here for it. So uh, there you have it. Uh, that's uh, that's really the whole story. Now we got more to talk about here. So of course, back in November, um, Us Weekly, you guys know me. I get all my news from Us Weekly. I open up, I get the hard copy mail at the supermarket. I open it up. I want to see that celebrities are just like us. I want to see that they're grabbing avocados at the store, that they're wearing their masks. I want to know all of it, folks. So uh, they have a story here. Back to season 14 runner-up Blake Horstman addresses Becca Kufrin dating rumors. Now look, I'm not here to make fun of anybody's names, but Horstman and Kufrin might be the two worst <laughs> combination names you could ever have. Let's just go with Blake and Becca for the rest. We don't need last names. We know who we're talking about. So um, uh, he had said, uh, me and Becca are friends. The reality TV 31-year-old personality wrote in response to an Instagram Q&A on Monday, November 30th. Let the woman be single for a while. She don't need no damn man to be happy. She is living her best life. And then on Behind the Rose podcast, he added that there is so much pressure on women to find a man. And it's ridiculous. Which makes you wonder. As hard as it is to date within the Bachelor Nation bubble that they're in, it must be very hard to date outside of it. I mean... People have seen Becca, you know, it would take a man with a strong sense of self to be able to date somebody who's been on national TV dating. I know that sounds lousy to say, but vice versa, Blake's had his issues with Stagecoach and Bachelor in Paradise and different issues. They've, they've both 
overcome some trauma within the Bachelor world. Blake with how he was edited on Bachelor in Paradise, releasing Kaylin's text. We made a video two days ago about that. If you want to check all that out, read some of the texts, uh, kind of trying to, uh, you know, prove that he wasn't the bad guy. And then Becca, Becca hasn't done anything wrong. She hasn't done anything wrong, but she got engaged to a man who had uh, troublesome, you know, you know, issues with Instagram posts he was liking and, you know, all the uh, things that just uh, don't stand with, uh, I think, what she was trying to look for in a relationship. I don't know. I don't know, folks. I don't know what it was, but that was enough to get rid of the relationship there. Her and Garrett, they were on the rocks. So uh, it makes you wonder, have they both dealt with their fair share of trauma within the Bachelor Nation and given the space and time that they need to sort of uh, overcome that, is it the right time? It makes you wonder. Read a few more quotes. We'll play some uh, clips from YouTube. Uh, He said, we've chatted a little bit. I told her I support her, and I hope she's doing well and everything. But it's just a friendship, he said on the Almost Famous. All right, so he's putting her in the friend zone, which is what you have to do. You know, she dumped him, right? Let's cut to that. She broke up with him. I don't know if YouTube's going to let me play this, but, you know, he, he did the whole thing where he, uh, you know, shares, uh, he o- opens up his soul on national TV. He's about ready to propose to her and saying, I'm ready to propose. What's going on? So anyway, I can't play any more of that. For all I know, they blocked it. If they blocked it, you saw some random jump cut. That's why. So he got crushed on national TV. So what's he supposed to do? Put her in the friend zone. He made the right move. He was like, let her be single. Let her do her thing. Reverse psychology, my man. Because look, you guys fell in love under ideal circumstances. Make it happen again, at least for all of us. So he says, uh, we have a good relationship. I think for the most part, we've been friendly the whole time since even the finale. There's never been any kind of weirdness between us. Hey, Garrett, how do you feel about that? She's been friendly with you, with him. Uh, When asked by Ben Higgins and Ashley I whether he's spoken to... Garrett, since the former surgical technology salesman debuted his new romance with Alex, Horseman said, no, I haven't chatted with Garrett about the relationship or anything. We haven't chatted in a bit, but I think everybody deserves happiness. So I hope this one sticks for him, I guess. While Horseman went on to note that fans don't know the timeline of Kufrin and Garrett's split, season 13 Bachelorette Rachel Lindsay told Us Weekly exclusively earlier this month that she believes Garrett went public with Farrar too soon. So they get into some other drama. But the interesting thing is, is the chemistry that Blake and Becca have. I'm just going to play a very, very quick clip from Blake's podcast. This was the, I think, the only time that they have done a podcast together. It's audio only. Uh, How's LA, Becca? Gosh, like you've lived there now a good amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I moved here mid-August and I love it. It's like, it just, it feels magical. And, and like coming off of the show, I know everyone always jokes, like people always move to LA for the fame and the opportunity. And I had zero plans on moving here. I was actually like planning on staying back in Minnesota. I was looking at buying a home in Minnesota, wasn't fully set on it. And then one night my friend FaceTimed me and she's like, just move to LA, like give it a couple months and see how you like it. And so that night I signed a lease and it was the best decision I've ever made. I love it here. I, it's just, it's like something, especially I think during quarantine where you can constantly be outside and walking and hiking and going to the beach and just like soaking in the sunshine. Like obviously I could not be doing that in Minnesota. It just, it feels right right now. So I think I'm going to make it a permanent thing pretty soon. So, so there you have it, folks. She's moved to LA. Blake will go wherever he needs to go. He's done stagecoach. It's only an hour and a half east of LA. He knows the route. He's been there before. He's dodged a few uh, bullets in the desert, if you know what I mean. Uh, shot a few bullets, too, if you know what I mean. Wow. Where are we going with this one, folks? Rambling. Rambling man. So, yeah, folks, there's a lot going on here. I'm not going to play the whole podcast, but you can go check it out. There are some interesting... Um, I check I checked this out. This, this is a few months old, the podcast, but... Um, There's a few interesting uh, moments. Of course, the good people over at Reddit had uh, some people like to make a a, uh, a, uh, summary of the podcast. So let's just go to some. Uh, Blake asked Becca if she would be the Bachelorette again. She says no because she likes sleep and alone time. Also, she has had two failed public engagements and doesn't want that kind of pressure again. She wants the next one to be the one. She's not sure the show is conducive to that for her. Wait a second. What does this... What does she mean she's had two failed public engagements. Am I missing something here? Because Blake doesn't count as an engagement. Uh, Blake asked her, would she do Paradise? Yes, but only if she could be Wells. So basically she says she would do Paradise, but only if she could be the bartender. Which actually, 
Now that we're thinking about it, Paradise might be looking for a new bartender because rumors have it Wells might become the next um, host of Bachelor in Paradise. Imagine Becca as the bartender. Could be interesting because then if they invite Blake back on, he can canoodle with the bartender. And as we know, uh, nothing wrong with canoodling with the bartender. Uh, Tip your waitress. Um... Some of Becca's friends are obsessed with Blake and DM him. They joke about it. All right, so Becca has made it clear that that she thinks Blake's a stud. Maybe that was part of her hesitation with Blake is that she kind of saw him as a playboy. Uh, they talk about Minnesota. Blake has never been there. Becca says she would love it. Becca says he would love it. Well, there you go. They start talking about making a bet on Instagram for the debate. What should they wager? Uh, uh, you know, these aren't all hits, folks. Blake says he doesn't have an alcohol line that he could send Becca. He could send her a We Met at Stagecoach shirt. Becca says she could be convinced to go to Stagecoach, but jokes that she would stay away from Blake. Blake acknowledges they almost made it through the full podcast without talking about Stagecoach. Stagecoach, of course, is where uh, Blake uh, canoodled, bumped Harrison's, if you will, um, two nights in a row with two uh, castmates, uh, Christina Shulman and then Kayla, Kaylin, you know, whatever her name. (laughs) I'm trying to get it all, folks. Lots of names. Uh, Becca jokes about how he's single. The girls are single. He can do what he wants. But where he messed up was going to live on the beach with these same girls. All right, so Becca gets it. She's like, look, you were single. You shagged a couple different girls. The problem wasn't that you shagged the different girls. The problem was that you had to go um, on a TV show with them on a beach together right after. That's the problem. So Becca gets it. Um, So anyhow, folks, anyhow, folks, lots of flirting going on. I suggest listening to that if you want to kind of get a little, uh, you know, some hope. I think there's some hope there. So this was posted by Bachelor USA Spoilers. Rumors have it that since Becca's breakup with Garrett, that she has began talking with Blake, her runner-up from her season of The Bachelorette. They both follow each other on Instagram. Before her breakup, it is doubtful she followed Blake. What are your thoughts? Did I get through everything? Let's finish this article over here. I'm kind of jumping around, folks. Um, who is this over here? I'm trying to... All right, what's this? Uh, da, 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 don't mind me, guys. We shoot this live here. Just trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, I think Becca is open to start dating again, but obviously coming out of an engagement, she wants to make sure that she takes her time and she does right, unlike other people. So there was some sort of uh, jest that uh, Rachel Lindsay had thrown because uh, Becca got engaged to Bla- uh, to Garrett, right? And then Garrett moved on relatively quickly. Some might say too quick. Who are we to judge? I'm not. But um, he moved on with his, uh, you know, girl, they post nice things. He's actually pleasant to follow. He's a pleasant follow on Instagram. I like to follow people that, that kind of um, get... Um, get kicked out of Bachelor Nation. Plus, I like to follow the other, you know, because it's like, all right, is Garrett the worst guy in the world? No. Is he toned up to certain issues? Sure. Join the rest of the country. There's a lot of people out there. But the guys, you know, he's he's an, he's an uncle. He's got a little baby he's carrying or whatever his Instagram is. I like to just see these people and see how they're doing because they are humans and aren't we all. But there, there's Blake still sticking around, kind of like the little, um, maybe a little bit more progressive. What do I know? You know, who knows what's in his closets? But, you know, there he is and he's uh, cheesy it he was in los angeles god i mean how could he be in los angeles and he didn't say hi to becca it it really makes you wonder but here's the final you want the final kicker guys here's the final kicker becca says she would consider bachelor in paradise what do we have going on over here you guys know it's march 31st today right but who's getting ready for the beach getting that summer bod ready says it right there folks two a days so this dude is getting back in shape Why, why is he what is he doing with his socks on Put some shoes on, you freaking psycho. Anyway, there he is. He's covering up the nipples. We know Blake likes to slip one out once in a while. Just kind of keep us on our toes. Nice bolt-ons, Blakeo. But, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. You know, Colorado is not that far from Los Angeles. It's a quick 12-hour drive, according to my estimations. So uh, let's see if he can uh, tap those Rockies, head west, and see what Becca's up to. Who knows? Maybe they can get some tapas. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment. Will we see them on Bachelor in Paradise? It's a crazy storyline, but I don't see why not. Bachelor in Paradise, um, uh, a source today I posted an article saying that this could be the first Bachelor in Paradise that has former leads. So we'll have to see. Leave a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And if you want to check out my vlog, it launches tomorrow. Just search Dave Neal Vlogs or check out the description. Bye, everybody.